United Launch Alliance launched an Atlas V rocket into space on May 18, carrying a U.S. Space Force missile warning satellite and two rideshare CubeSats. The two-stage rocket blasted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, following a 24-hour delay due to an issue with the rocket's liquid oxygen system. The primary payload, called Space-Based Infrared System Satellite, is the fifth of the SIBRS network of satellites that use scanning and staring infrared sensors to detect ballistic missile launches anywhere on the globe. About 16 minutes and 30 seconds after liftoff, two rideshare payloads were released from the rocket's Centaur upper stage into orbit. The CubeSats, known as Technology Demonstration Orbiters, carried multiple U.S. government payloads for the U.S. Air Force Academy. Nearly 43 minutes after liftoff, the 4,850-kg Sibers Geo-5 satellite separated from the upper stage and deployed to a geosynchronous transfer orbit, ranging in altitude between 925 and 35,700 km, with an inclination of 21.14 degrees to the equator. From there, the spacecraft will navigate itself to a circular geostationary orbit at an altitude of nearly 36,000 km above the Earth. The satellite joins four other SIBRS satellites stationed in geostationary orbits and four SIBRS-hosted payloads that monitor the polar regions from high-altitude elliptical orbits. The SIBRS satellites made by Lockheed Martin comprise of a scanning sensor and a staring sensor, both sensitive in the infrared wavelength range. The scanning sensor provides continuous observation and surveillance for intercontinental ballistic missile launch detection while the staring sensor has a higher sensitivity and faster revisit rate to detect the low signature of short-range theater ballistic missiles. Sibir's satellites detected and tracked more than 1,000 missile launches around the world in 2020. Sibir's Geo-6, the final satellite of the constellation, is projected to launch in 2022. Firefly Aerospace announced on May 20 that it has selected SpaceX to launch its first lunar lander mission for NASA. Firefly said that a SpaceX Falcon 9 will launch its Blue Ghost lunar lander in 2023 on a mission to land on the near side of the moon. Blue Ghost will be carrying 10 payloads for NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services mission, in addition to separately contracted commercial payloads. NASA is using the CLIPS program to award private companies missions to carry experiments to the moon's surface, in part as preparation for the forthcoming Artemis missions. Firefly Aerospace, an American private aerospace firm founded in January 2014, was awarded the $93.3 million worth CLIPS task in February 2021 and has since made rapid progress on the Blue Ghost program. The Blue Ghost mission will include the delivery of NASA payloads to the lunar surface, which will support scientific lunar research and contribute to developing a sustainable presence on the Moon as part of the Artemis program. Firefly Aerospace will be responsible for end-to-end -end delivery services, including payload integration, launch from Earth, landing on the Moon, and mission operations. Firefly is developing its own launch vehicle, Alpha, with a first launch expected in the coming weeks. However, that rocket is not powerful enough to take Blue Ghost to the Moon, requiring Firefly to purchase a launch from SpaceX. Meanwhile, SpaceX hasn't yet sent a Falcon 9 on a lunar mission, but it has flown many successful missions, and its specs allow for moon deliveries. The high performance of Falcon 9 launch vehicle permits a lunar transit using minimal Blue Ghost propulsion resources, thereby allowing the lander to deliver more than 150 kilograms of payload to the lunar surface. With this contract, SpaceX is now launching five of the six CLIPS missions awarded by NASA to date. The first lander launching under CLIPS is scheduled to fly on a United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket sometime in the fourth quarter of this year. Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 made its first flight to space in more than two years, on May 22. The Spaceship 2 vehicle, named VSS Unity, with pilots C.J. Sturco and Dave McKay on board, took off from Spaceport America in New Mexico on Saturday, carried aloft by its White Knight 2 aircraft, about 50 minutes later, at an altitude of 13,400 meters, the plane released VSS Unity. The spacecraft then fired up its onboard rocket motor for approximately 60 seconds and powered itself to suborbital space. The spacecraft reached Mach 3 and attained a maximum altitude of 89.2 kilometers before gliding and landing smoothly on a runway at Spaceport America. Even though the Kármán line, an imaginary borderline at 100 km above sea level, is defined as the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and outer space, Air Force personnel get their astronaut wings if they get at least 80 km above Earth. 
This was the third crewed test flight of Spaceship 2 vehicle and the first to launch to space from New Mexico. Unity's first two space flights that occurred in December 2018 and February 2019 lifted off from the Mojave Air and Space Port in California. Unity is in the final stages of its test campaign, but it's not yet ready to carry paying customers. The space plane will likely perform three more test flights this year. The company hasn't published a schedule for the upcoming flights, other than expecting them to be completed by the fall. If all those test flights go well, commercial operations could begin in early 2022. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. Following its successful launch and landing attempts, Starship Serial No. 15 has been resting on the suborbital launch pad B since May 14. On May 21, ahead of its pre-flight ground tests, all three Raptor engines of SN15 were removed from the spacecraft. Recently, someone shared a post-flight image of SN15 on Reddit, showcasing its three Raptor engines. The engines seem to be subject to some kind of oxidation reaction, causing a rusty surface on their engine bells. The prime cause of this condition could be the flame that appeared underneath SN15 after its landing on May 5th. After removing all the engines from the spacecraft, they were transported to Starship build site for inspection and repair. These are Raptor engines serial numbers 54, 61, and 66, which may be used again in future Starships. In his recent tweet, Elon Musk mentioned that the hard part about Raptor is simplifying its design. The Starship orbital launch tower is under construction at the production site, as teams simultaneously build the next Starship prototypes that will soar into Boca Chica's sky. On May 21, the second segment of the orbital launch tower was moved to the launch site from the build site. Two more such segments have already been built at the construction site. The segments are constructed out of structural steel trusses to allow a mechanical arm to lift the Starship onto the Super Heavy booster for stacking. Seven or eight such segments are required to complete the 140 meters launch tower. Scaffolds can be found at each corner of the launch tower segment, which supports the work crew and the materials used to build the integration tower. Elon Musk previously said that the launch tower will feature an arm that will catch super heavy, with load points just below the grid fins and shock absorbers built into the tower arms. Two new massive crawler cranes were raised at the launch site last week. A Lever LR11000 crane, nicknamed King, got erected on May 18. Powered by a 500 kilowatt engine, the crane has hook heights of up to 220 meters and has a load capacity of 1,000 metric tons. The crane with its boom version can cover a wide range of jobs that are broadly used for infrastructure, wind power, industrial construction, or port handling. On May 21, a more massive crane, Liebherr LR11350, nicknamed Kong, got erected near the previous one. The crane has hook heights of up to 220 meters and has a load capacity of 1,350 metric tons. Powered by a 750 kilowatt engine, the crane delivers outstanding load capacities over its entire operating range. The arrival of orbital launch tower segments and crawler cranes to stack them signals that SpaceX is rapidly approaching the first orbital flight of Starship. The only clues to when it might happen are an operating window beginning optimistically on June 20 and Musk's own stated goals of going orbital by July of this year. In a recent tweet, Mr. Musk mentioned that he is planning for a Starship presentation this year. We can expect him to be revealing more details about the future of the Starship test campaign during this presentation. The last time he appeared publicly to speak about Starship was in September 2019. More than six months after SpaceX won a NASA Tipping Point Award to demonstrate a large-scale cryogenic propellant transfer in orbit with Starship, the agency has begun disbursing funds, officially kicking off work on the mission. This month, a new financial document published on the U.S. federal government website revealed that NASA Marshall Space Flight Center has already awarded SpaceX over $50 million as part of the Human Landing System contract for a Starship orbital refueling demonstration. The agreement was signed on May 4, specifically for an on-orbit large-scale cryogenic propellant management and transfer demonstration, set to be completed by the end of 2022. Under the contract, SpaceX will demonstrate how the methane-fueled Starship launch system can be refueled in low Earth orbit. The company aims to refuel the spacecraft connected back-to-back -back with another Starship that will carry propellant. 
NASA says that SpaceX will conduct a large-scale flight demonstration to transfer 10 metric tons of cryogenic propellant, specifically liquid oxygen, between tanks on a Starship vehicle. It's unclear if NASA expects SpaceX to recover the Starship involved in the test. SpaceX will collaborate with Glenn and Marshall Space Centers for this mission. On April 16, NASA chose SpaceX over competing proposals from Blue Origin and Dynetics for the Lunar Human Landing System contract because of funding constraints, even though it originally wanted to. As discussed in our previous video in detail, on May 12, an amendment to a Senate bill asked NASA to select a second company for its HLS program within 30 days. Now, a new version of the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act, released on May 18, made two critical changes to the HLS section. The 30 days period was extended to 60 days, and more significantly, a clause was added directing NASA not to change or terminate the selection already made. This means the award to SpaceX may not be altered or rescinded to comply with the requirement that there be at least two contractors. Moving on to other Starship updates, a super heavy methane feed system was spotted at the build site last week. The system has 28 feed lines to supply fuel to the super heavy booster's 28 Raptor engines. As you can see here, Casper Stanley made a stunning 3D render of the Super Heavy plumbing system. The booster has a 20 plus 8 engine configurations, with 20 Raptors on the outside and 8 on the inside. According to Elon Musk, each one of the outer 20 engines will have a thrust of about 300 tons, and the inner 8 engines will have 210 tons each. So roughly 7,500 tons of total sea level thrust, or 1.5 thrust to weight ratio during launch. Previously, when SpaceX had plans for a 37-engine configuration in Super Heavy, Elon Musk mentioned that the outer engines will not be gimbaled and will be mechanically joined to the nozzle, whereas the center seven engines will gimbal to 15 degrees. In the new 28-engine configuration, the outer 20 will be fixed, while the inner eight can be gimbaled. Inside the high bay, workers began assembling Super Heavy Booster BN3, which is considered to be the first Super Heavy Booster to be launched from Starbase, carrying Starship Serial Number 20 with it. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.